since we're a little pressed for time, yep, we're good to go. So um, this is uh, Peter and Kate interviewing uh, Bill McDermott um, on uh, the 21st of October at uh, Fraser River Pile and Dredge. Uh, and Bill, maybe um, could we start by asking you, how did you get into this business uh, in the first place? Uh, I got into it when uh, I was in school at BCIT looking for work and the job here that was posted and advertised was uh, the closest to what I was looking to do when I went to school. Construction management, project management um, in the construction field and marine construction was appealing so I applied out of college. And, and why was uh, marine construction appealing to you? Uh, only that it's a little more unique than construction in general and uh, offered a little more chance of travel up and down the coast and working in working in places more unique than uh, just you know, concrete towers or residential buildings. So you'd heard of marine construction before, obviously? Uh, just through some friends and oh, acquaintances okay. that knew of dredging and tugboats and working on the water. Did you grow up uh, in, uh, in the area? I grew up all over BC. Uh, we moved around a lot, uh, but I was born in North Vancouver and lived here on and off three different times. So, I guess Vancouver is the place where I lived the most often. Mm -hmm. And and was your were your was your family in uh, marine uh, no. types of work or anything no, no, like no. that? No, 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 no. They had nothing to do with it, nor have any of my siblings or anyone in my family. And do you still find now that you've been doing this? Do you still find that marine construction is vastly different from what you know of other construction sites or things and what, uh, what, what is it's, different? It's different. It's, uh, it takes different kinds of equipment, different methodologies, different uh, approaches to getting the same sort of work done uh, because you're working off a floating platform or uh, dealing with tides, currents, uh, water levels, um, also marine traffic you know, can go by and cause swells and mm -hmm. some big problems if you're trying to do some delicate work, you know, fitting some forms or trying to get something bolted together can be a real problem if there's traffic in the river. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they don't slow down, and they don't tend to heed. Um, you know, and marine traffic is pretty loosely controlled. People roar up and down the river, um, towing barges or freighters going to Fraser Surrey docks, and they don't tend to listen to uh, calls to slow down or no wake. So it can be a little challenging. Mm -hmm. But I think you seem to be saying that that challenge is enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're out on the river. Um, you're not stuck beside a freeway or on a residential street somewhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And so on, well, I guess we'll keep going. So, um, do you go out to all the job sites that you're, you, how many projects do you have? I try to, I don't, I don't have to. I have, I'm at the stage now where I have superintendents or project coordinators that look after the work mostly, but I try to get out. Um, Typically have a couple, three, four projects working at the same time. Can be as few as one or two. Can be as many as you know half a dozen. Uh, you generally short duration. Generally uh, start and end in less than a week. So can be over in a hurry, which makes it a challenge to get out to the site and visit it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it may be started and finished before I get a chance to get out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The um, um, 
one of, one of the things that we uh, uh, heard earlier is that um, it seems as though the the business um, has been getting more technical, more demanding in terms of information. Um, some of the jobs are getting more complicated. Mm -hmm. Is that? It, can, can you maybe um, maybe sort of give a perspective on the time that you've been working? How? What changes have you seen over sure. the time that you've been working? Um, I think the easiest way to explain that would be when I first started. A lot of the. When was that, sir? Thirteen years ago. Thirteen years ago. A lot of the structures that were still in use and that we were maintaining or repairing were timber. And they were used for handling material off barges or, or handling bulk material or having berths where barges or ships could tie up. And there was a there was still some timber facilities in use and you know, years and years ago they started to replace those with steel or concrete. Mm. And when I started we had some repairs to do to them. We had crews that specialized in timber work, some older bridgemen that had spent their entire careers working with timber. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't see many of those repairs anymore. All the new construction is with steel and concrete. It's very rare you see any new construction with timber. Uh, the, the, the steel and concrete is getting bigger. The vessels and the, the materials they want to handle are, are a lot bigger. So the the engineering's uh, a little more detailed and a little more uh, advanced, and the the facilities that we build and now maintain are bigger, much bigger. Mm -hmm. Used to be a lot more smaller timber structures, and now there's fewer, um, but bigger. And most of the work that we do with the timber now is demolition. Mm. Mm -hmm. Demolition and then taking tim old timber. Yeah, like a timber dock has served its life. It's it's worn out. It's decommissioned, and there's no more repairs to do to it. It's demolition, mm -hmm. and then it's replaced, or the property is sold for some other use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's very rare that we do repairs to timber, and it's more likely that we do demolition now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you, we've heard this term bridgeman. Can you can you describe for the general lay public what a, what what do you mean by a bridge man? Yeah, that's um, a trained, qualified union worker, and uh, the the marine construction industry uses um, uh, all of our labor from uh, one particular union hall, and that is uh, local two four o four. Bridgemen, pile drivers, divers, um, and <clears throat> so I guess I don't I don't know exactly where it came from. Maybe because they built bridges, mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. bridgemen are uh, pile drivers first and foremost, but they're also marine workers, marine laborers, and so there's another example. Used to be some older guys that were professionals at timber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now if you specialize in timber, you don't get to work very often. <laughs> All the young guys are told as they're coming out of school to get your welding ticket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's some guys that still know timber because of concrete forming. But in the old days, they would get some big creosote timbers and drive timber piles and build a dock out of nothing but wood. Mm -hmm. Now the only knowledge you need for wood is for forming for concrete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. But uh, the 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 bridgeman that has his welding ticket gets more work mm -hmm. than the bridgeman that's trained in carpentry. Mm -hmm. That makes me think of the, the new West Key. Like it's all wood. Not that it's I know the I know the structure. It's yeah. It's an old it's an old dock from a previous uh, um, commercial site that was up there. And it, it, it was old when, uh, it was a sawmill or I uh, can't remember. Which one are you thinking of? The New West Key. Like uh, right the it, uh, it was uh, Pacific Coast Terminals. Yeah, so that was an old dock when they left. Yeah. And it's right. still there. 
Well, that's what I had actually wondered about. Anyway, but... What, know, whether it's going to fall into well, the water? No, no, just where, <laughs> well, I mean, particularly the esplanade uh, bet- in front of all the um, condo buildings down mm-hmm. there. We go and mm-hmm. fix that every couple of years. The city of New West oh. uh, puts out a tender for structural timber repairs underneath there, and and it's that's an old dock. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's an old dock from years ago when that was a commercial property, and that is a worn out old dock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it takes a lot of repairs every year to keep it safe. Right, 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 right. That's interesting. I've seen underneath there. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, as you were talking, that's where my mind went. I thought, hmm. There's the Esplanade, and then there's there's the old uh, New S Key where the where the casino boat used to be. Yeah, mm-hmm. there. Some of that's new. Okay. We built some of that new for the casino oh. boat when it was tied up there. But some of that's very old. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. When you crawl underneath, like when you're on top, and that's why I'm working on the water is interesting. When you're on top, you just drive into a parking lot and you walk around and you see asphalt mm-hmm. and you see a handrail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you get in a boat and go underneath, you see a span of 60 years from oldest to newest underneath there and how it's all joined together and mm-hmm. how it's made to, to it's, it's there to make it safe for people to walk around up top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it can be a combination of timber and steel and concrete and whatever else you need to put underneath there. Right, right, right. Yeah. When, when you're, when you're, uh, you, you've, you've, I, I guess you, you worked that sort of site, or you've done, you've done the, the estimates and you've done the plans for, for repairs there, that kind of thing. That would be part of your work. We don't do engineering. We're a contractor. Okay. We don't uh, design work. Okay. But uh, an engineer will design the work and a client will prepare us with a package or and it may include drawings and it may include a design and it may include some engineering and we're asked to price, hmm. uh, supply the materials and install them and uh, build whatever it is that's shown on the drawings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So a repair would be engineered and it would be... Uh, a qualified engineer would decide that a pile would need to be replaced or a cap would need to be repaired or replaced or um, damage would be, um, you know, a damaged portion removed and replaced. So an engineer would decide that and then we would tell them how many dollars it would take to to execute that. Right, right. So when when you, when when you look at, uh, at that sort of place on the river and, and other places like it where you where you know you've You've done some work. What do you? What do you? What do you? What do you sort of feel? I mean, do you, you, do you. I like to maintain old structures along the river. I mean, they have some history, and they're still using, utilizing them. They serve a purpose, uh, particularly along the New West waterfront. But those, you know, when when uh, timber structures are built, they cost a lot less than steel and concrete, but they require more frequent maintenance, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and over the over a long term, like 25, 30, 40 years, that maintenance catches up and exceeds what it would cost to just tear it out and build something that requires zero maintenance, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like steel and concrete. Mm-hmm. But um, it's interesting to maintain these old timber structures, uh, to be working on something that, and I hear it frequently from, from the crew, my dad worked on this, mm-hmm. uh, oh. an old superintendent that's uh, going to retire next year. I remember working on this when I was an apprentice. Mm-hmm. I remember driving these piles 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some history to it, and uh, it can still be used, and it can still be repaired. And mm-hmm. Timber is, is uh, pretty flexible, not not just uh, you know structurally, but it's it can be adapted and and uh, changed for different uses over the years and uh, that's interesting building a big steel and concrete structure is is interesting too but when you walk away from it you probably Mm. won't be back for decades Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've built some steel and concrete structures and we have yet to go back you know Mm. ten years later not even a phone call yeah, yeah, because there's nothing broken or worn out yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But timber, you know, BC Ferries, one of our biggest clients. Uh, they they used to have all 
timber structures hmm. for every BC oh. ferry terminal. <laughs> and they got used hard I bet. Well, yeah. and <laughs> frequently. Yeah. And we, we were constantly repairing and fixing. But now, for you know, as, as, as contractors' <laughs> equipment improves hmm. and uh, has bigger capacity, like our cranes and our pile driving equipment, the engineers design and contractors build bigger, stronger structures. Mm -hmm. BC Ferries now has decades and decades of experience and and uh, how to how to design and build structures that can take a daily beating. And technologies improved with fendering systems and berthing systems where they can come in mm -hmm. six or eight times a day and bang into them yeah. and not wreck them in any way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now the stuff we're building is requiring less and less maintenance, mm. but they have so many facilities that it's a continually ongoing process where the one we built 20 years ago needs to be replaced. By the time it comes around again, it'll need another replacement in another 20, you know, 15 or 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done extensive work on the Queensboro Rail Bridge. Oh, yeah. And that's a that's a timber structure. Yeah, sure. The steel bridge, the swing span, is a hundred years old, and we're slowly replacing the timber parts of the trestle and the protection pier that was a hundred years old. We're slowly replacing that with steel, and the parts that you replace with steel. Uh, picture there used to be a picture. The parts that we're replacing. So this is a Patello rail bridge, but same oh, yeah. same sort of concept. So mm -hmm. uh, all brand new steel okay. protection pier. So when the bridge is uh, in rail position, it's this way, mm -hmm. and when it's open for marine traffic, it swings this way, and it actually fills up this whole pier so the bridge is on top of it mm -hmm. yeah so that when tugs and barges come and they get out of control they hit this thing mm -hmm. instead of the bridge mm -hmm. so what happened at Queensboro is they they hit this thing destroyed it took the bridge and pushed the bridge right off its center pier and oh, okay very nearly pushed the bridge in the river completely yeah 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 so <coughs> it was uh, Replacing some of the 30, 40, 50 year old timber structure with steel. And it's, it's uh, interesting now when you see damage, somebody hits the Queensboro Rail Bridge. The new part that we put in is completely undamaged with scrape marks on it. Mm -hmm. And the timber, where the timber starts, is completely gone. <laughs> it's just disappeared. It's downriver. <laughs> so the client slowly replaces uh -huh. with the, the much bigger, stronger steel structure. Yes. The barges are, everything is getting bigger. The barges are bigger, the tugs are bigger. Yeah. Um, you mentioned steel and concrete. I'm wondering if you um, use the river in any way to ship materials, like you do you source? Well, yeah, our yard is on the river. So, yeah. Um, Where do you? All of our if if you can transport the materials on land, you can you have more flexibility, and and if you have access to the land, and you can get your materials from land, that's good. But most of the time we can't, so we have to bring the materials here, load it on a barge, and take it to the job site on okay. the water, and we have to have material barges with us with the pipe and the the ferry terminal pieces or whatever it is we're building, mm -hmm. conveyors for coal or sulfur. Mm -hmm. uh, if we can reach and, and access from land, you have more flexibility, trucks, uh, a little, little easier to do, but if you have no access to that, you can't reach that far. Mm -hmm. We need a marine yard. We yeah. have to be able to load barges and ship materials from yeah. the river. I just wondered if you, um, say, like, get, I don't know, concrete 
from up the river on a, at a spot like I know there's yep we do that um, okay. one of the precast suppliers has a marine facility but right. they but they have to have um, they don't have to it's nice if they have marine facilities yeah. if they don't we make do we get steel like ferry ramps fabricated and we leave it up to the mm. to the supplier of that to get it somewhere along the river okay and we'll Okay. Put a barge underneath it, and they'll roll that on, and away we go. Okay. So they get pretty creative. They use yeah. anybody's property that they can get access mm. to. So we do that. Uh, we, if we can buy it off someone that can load it on our barges, great. Mm -hmm. If not, we have to truck it somewhere where we can get a crane and put it on our barge. Mm -hmm. Costs more. Yeah. And then we go up and down the coast from. Prince Rupert to uh, the Gulf Islands hmm. and as far up river as Harrison hmm. um, I've been up some pretty sketchy water <laughs> we've been up as far as Chilliwack to uh, um, just about to the town of Chilliwack to the city of Chilliwack wow. in the river yeah. but we're stationed here, we're based here, and the, the bulk of our business is, uh, you know, um, the bulk of it is around New Westminster, and then as you get further away, it, uh, hmm. less and less business. But yeah, like we said, BC Ferry is a big, big customer, and they're everywhere up and down the coast. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wherever they have a terminal, we, we do work. Mm -hmm. we are, um, in this in this business, it, it, do do, uh, do do companies tend to have territories that they they service mainly? No, no. There's there's other companies that do what we do, and we all uh, do work in British Columbia, all over British Columbia, and upland, as far north as the Yukon border and mm. Fort Saint John, and all all over. Mm -hmm. uh, where we don't go is the United States. And uh, we, Fraser River, we've decided that we don't want to work internationally. But other competitors, they've worked in Chile and Vietnam and hmm. South America and oh, okay. the Caribbean. Um, hmm. If the job, Newfoundland, if the job uh, looks appealing enough to them and it looks like it's profitable, they'll go after it. Yeah. But we as a company, we've decided that we're going to limit our work to Western Canada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And any particular reason for that? Uh, we can't work in the U.S. because of uh, punitive um, uh, trade uh, laws that uh, pretty much prevent you from taking floating equipment into the U.S. But it works both ways. And mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. has the same punitive uh, duties and tariffs if you bring a piece of equipment in here. Mm -hmm. It's called the Jones Act, mm -hmm. and it applies to cruise ships as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, basically you can transit through waters but if you drop anchor or um, use your equipment to do work. So they can take barges to Seattle and unload material and load it up and we do that. We buy stuff from mm -hmm. places mm -hmm. in Seattle and Bellingham. You can take a barge and they can put stuff on it and you can bring it back but if you stop and do any work you pay a million dollars in duty. Right, mm -hmm. right. So right. it's just it's just so punitive, they just made it so that you stay there, we stay here, mm -hmm. we don't work mm -hmm. back and forth. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. neither country really uh, gets into it. The only time we've heard of it being used ever, for me, ever in 13 years, as far as I know, ever in the last 50 years, was uh, Kiewit's an American company, and they, they brought an American Derrick to do the Portman Bridge, mm -hmm. and they paid that huge duty. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and they've they've kept it here, and now they're going to sell it because they've changed it to a Canadian yeah. hull. So right, right, right. It all depends on where it was built and sure. where it's registered. But sure, sure. We restrict ourselves to British Columbia for business reasons. Uh, it's, we're not interested in chasing work internationally. It's very risky. Every time you go somewhere, it's different laws, different rules and regulations, yeah. um, mm -hmm. different environmental considerations. Um, we're pretty good at working in British Columbia and uh, 
the Northwest Territories, and we've done some work up there. But we don't. We're not. We're trying to work in Alberta, but we're not interested in working anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we recognized years ago that we have to devote uh, significant resources to maintaining what we call our core business, and we never want to. No matter how busy we get in other things, we don't want to abandon those core clients that come to us uh, two, three, four times a year. And those are the businesses in the river mm. and the harbor So that yeah. require once, twice, three times a year maintenance to their facilities. Can you can you spell out some of those, and particularly any, any that are located within New mm -hmm. West? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, all the sawmills. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Which are, I'm, just for me, I... They're diminishing yeah, a like, lot. Sure, but uh, when I started 13 years ago, that probably half of them are gone, hmm. and I've demolished a couple, three myself. Oh, wow. So it's Which sad. Ones? Uh, the Shook Mill Warehouser. Oh. Um, huh. I was part of that. We we did the demolition there. Um, you talking about over at uh, Interfall? Western or Warehouser? The Shook Mill, that's where the new Stardust Casino was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, the that was, yeah. We called that the Shook Mill. Yeah, because yeah, that's where... Uh, yeah. Triple W, right across the river. Mm -hmm. We did the demolition there, Western White, oh. Whitewood. Uh, I can't remember who owned Triple W, but they were an operating mill when I got here. And it's warehouses now, right across the river. I call, oh. that, I call that Interfall. Okay, yeah, so that was Western Whitewood. Oh, yeah. you took... Triple and W. it's only a couple... How long was that? Uh, it seems... Five or six years ago. Yeah. We did, you know, it's a huge corporation, so we were, we were phoned and they said, come and do some repair work. So we came and did the repair work, and then a week later, he said, come and do some demolition. Really? So they had decided oh, on okay. Friday to repair some stuff, and they decided on Monday morning that that's it, the mill's shutting down, and we're going to tear it down. Wow. Yeah. So sad huh. mill was a uh, pretty good mill. Then uh, Canadian White Pine down the river uh, was part of that demolition. Eburn, mm -hmm. Fraser Mills, mm -hmm. some big sawmills that were operating 15 years ago and are just vacant lots now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all of those require two, three times a year maintenance. Um, the sawmill, like the, the dock? Or the some of them work 24 hours a day. Hmm. Okay. And they're, they're on a river yeah. so that they can tow their materials mm -hmm. cheaply, tugboats. And there's nothing cheaper than a, a, a single engine tugboat chugging away. Mm -hmm. It might take days, but he's just, uh, you know, a couple, three guys in a diesel engine towing logs on, on the ocean and up the river. And the Fraser River is the biggest warehouse in North America for, for wood. Mm -hmm. And they can't tow, they can't deliver logs as cheap as they can towing. So everyone built their mill along the river and they have what they call dewatering. So you got to get the log from the water to the mill. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing that 24 hours a day, things wear out and break and their little dozer boats sink and mm -hmm. stuff happens and they've decided we want to we want more steel piles mm. to tie up our logs we want to move what we have we're mm -hmm. constantly adjusting mm. so and then of course the other here. the other consideration is the Fraser River brings silt mm. and one of our biggest revenue generators our most successful parts of our business for the last I don't know however hundred years is all of these places along the river have to be dredged. Yeah, that's what I really wanted to hear about too was how often? Like I mean it a, it depends. <laughs> how often? So. <laughs> well, where see, where are you sister. where are you in the river? Is it a is it a place that fills in? Some places in the river scour. Okay. Right. It depends on where you are. It depends on what the freshet was like mm -hmm. and how much silt came down. Mm-hmm. And if you're in a bad place, it's three times a year. If it's a scour place, we're putting rock in so that you're not losing your land. Or because right. it's, it's okay. just disappearing. But then the guy down river is getting all of that. <laughs> and it's, it's muddying in his marina. Mm -hmm. Or his clients can't get their yachts in and out unless okay. it's high water. So someone like or, that would just call you up and say, hey. It, or is it when I first started here, it was... 
um, get a permit and the, the permitting process was pretty straightforward and we opted as a business model to try and um, do that for clients so that if we controlled the permits no other contractors mm -hmm. could get in there and we still do that and uh, the clients opt to do that now because it has become an extremely long complicated onerous difficult pr process to get a permit to dredge mm -hmm. and we're experts at it now mm -hmm. um, it's a huge part of our business is dealing with permits but mm -hmm. We'll, we'll dig some places three times a year, some places once every three years. Okay. Depends on where you are. Hmm. Um, but it's it has to be part of their business plan to save money and have maintenance dredging. Mm -hmm. And I used to do quite a bit of it. I do less of it now, but used to do clamshell dredging up and down the river. Hmm. And uh, a lot of these sawmills, it's uh, two days once a year. Mm -hmm. You go in and clean it up for a couple of days and then they'd be good for another year and but it, it is something as easy as uh, the dozer boat guy says I'm I'm hitting bottom mm. and the next tide cycle the next month where it drops a little lower a little lower a little lower every month you go um, it gets more and more difficult for him to get his work done and get the logs into the mill so they they kind of have a heads up and then they call you and they let you know it's if it's not this month it's next month mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, we have some fisheries windows that we can't work in, mm -hmm. but generally we're about 10 or 11 months a year, and it's as simple as a couple, three guys and a marine derrick and some barges, and we go in and dig mud for two days and uh, take it out to sea and dump it. So for the, 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 these core clients, this kind of core business on the river, um, uh, does it does it help? to have the same person go back and work the same site oh, yeah. year after year absolutely yeah. yeah yeah how do you how do you how do you do that uh, we've I, just kept the same guy doing that exact work uh, f unfortunately for you he's bernie yeah. that was hurt today and he's done more work in the fraser river than anyone in the last 30 wow. years and he does he manages a lot of that core work and that dredging and that uh, two three day work and the repairs to docks and sawmills and uh, you know he's he's got most information of anyone unfortunately they had to take him to the hospital today so mm -hmm. he won't be in today and I doubt for another month or two sure, so, sure. Uh, I shouldn't say month or two he's going on holidays but okay. um, I think he's he's either dislocated his shoulder or maybe fractured something in his shoulder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Slipped and fell and uh, hard landing on a concrete dock. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's dangerous work. It's pile driving. Yeah. So and that... then you add, you know, pile driving is dangerous enough and then and dredging pretty destructive big equipment yeah. uh -huh. with huge capacities and then you add on to that you're on the water. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're changing and the Fraser River is tidal all the way up to Mission. Hmm. So as you come into these sawmills, you come in and the tide will drop and rise through the day. Plus you've got boat wakes and you've got some big equipment, mm -hmm. like barges full of mud and tugboats. And uh, um, you got to wear life jackets. You got to go back and forth between the barge and the derrick. You got to jump in a tugboat. You got to go check something out. It's it's uh, mm -hmm. dangerous work. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. At the best of times, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it can be pretty pretty pleasant and enjoyable on a nice sunny afternoon too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, how about for these for these kind of these bigger jobs? How how important you know something like uh, doing the um, do the pilings for one of the new bridges or something like that? Do you, does it make a difference if someone's worked on this river for many years? Are they? Do well, they that's the strength of our company is we have enough. We have we have people that. And we have a lot of people that have decades of experience working on the Fraser River from superintendents, foremen, and project managers. So that any time, any, on any job, we can uh, call upon the experiences of two, three, four people that might have 60 to 100 years experience combined on the mm -hmm. Fraser River. So, uh, And some of our superintendents, uh, when we go to 
build a new bridge, they can recall 30 years ago driving the piles for the old bridge and how difficult it was or what the problems were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, a lot of times my, my superintendents, the two or three that I uh, use frequently on, on work, they're close to retiring. They're in their 60s and they've been doing this since they were 19 years old. So they can recall vaguely and then with uh, you know some more thought and a few other people giving their input, the details come back. They can recall what it was like to work there 30 or 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's very important to us when we're trying to give out prices in 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Sure. But yeah, the, the, the strength of Fraser River is in its people uh, and the, the experiences that those people have and uh, how many people we have that have been doing nothing but working along the Fraser River their entire careers, which mm -hmm. can span 30 or 40 years. So, mm -hmm. I've been a part of retirement parties here where, mm -hmm. um, you know, there were 40 year people that had stayed here their entire career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a good company to work for. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's always people that come and go, but there's, uh, so there's a lot of people that stay here. Uh, lifers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there are there uh, are there other companies uh, in the Lower Mainland that are that are doing something similar? Oh sure, we have competition. Yeah. 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 Who, who who are some of them? Uh, Vancouver Pile Driving. So, Vancouver Pile Driving, their headquarters is beside the Iron Workers Memorial in Vancouver Harbor. Okay. So just out of uh, pure economics, uh, because we're we are. Where's the Queensboro Rail Bridge or Queensboro Bridge? So we're right here, and very nicely centered in the Fraser River. Mm -hmm. uh, clients have come to recognize that we can react quicker and get to their job site here cheaper than towing all the way around from the harbor, which costs about eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. But it works the other way too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of facilities in the harbor and Van Pyle can get there quicker and cheaper than us. Mm -hmm. But we have uh, clients that like us and when we're over there we'll tie in a couple, three different stops, mm -hmm. ease the pain of uh, tugboat towing us over there. We see Van Pyle sail by on the river, wonder what they're doing <laughs> in our river. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, there are competitors. Uh, they're formidable competitors. They're capable of doing the same work we do for the same price, and mm -hmm. uh, it's competition is good, mm -hmm. and our clients enjoy it, and mm -hmm. uh, they get fair a fair price for their work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's uh, there's other companies that work up and down the river. We don't we certainly don't own 100 percent of all the work in the river, but close to it. Does um. <coughs> Um, and the fact that we're twice as big as our nearest competitor. Twice as big as Van Pyle? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. And then there's other smaller competitors below that. But as far as equipment or manpower or staff or project managers or superintendents, we, we pretty much double up mm -hmm. our nearest competitor, which gives us uh, an advantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you do work in the um, uh, in residential construction, mm -hmm. uh, buildings, kind of thing? What, yep. So, what 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 kind of work would that be? How what would your role in that be? Foundations, pile driving. Okay, so that and that could be anywhere. It doesn't have to be close to the water. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I had a question, just building off something you said about. Um, I've heard <coughs> other people say. This is either true or false that trucking is trucking things is cheaper than sending things down the uh, it, river, and I wonder what that meant. It's actually not, but if you can if you can transport things on land, yeah. it's in much smaller pieces, right? And you have more flexibility. About so, flexibility in the locations. You so can take if it it's um, if it's pipe. You know, an individual piece of pipe, a truck can carry six or eight or ten, depending on how big they are. 
um, you have flexibility on when you can have that arrive. Okay, right. Yeah. And yeah. so I worked, I worked recently driving piles for the Evergreen Line for the new mm, SkyTrain. Oh. So that's up in Port Moody, mm. and it's very competitive because every every guy that thinks he's a pile driver can buy a crane. Anybody can go out and buy a crane. <laughs> Anybody can go out and find someone to run it. Okay. Mm. So everybody thinks they're a pile driver. And you got to be <laughs> extremely cheap to get work mm -hmm. because there's five times the competition there is in marine construction. Mm -hmm. Marine construction, you have to have floating equipment. Mm -hmm. There's only two or three contractors that have that. Mm -hmm. The insurance is much more expensive. Um, some rusty old worn out crane can do the same work that my brand new crane can do up in Port Moody. So, we had stuff delivered there by truck, and you just phone, and an hour later it shows up. And it's all small loads, but you can control it much better. If we go to Port McNeil and build a ferry terminal like we are doing right now, you're not trucking anything because you can't reach it from where you're working. Uh, to come into shore to a place where you can get out of truck. And all you're all you're reaching is fifty thousand uh, pounds. You're you're taking it on a barge where you can take seven hundred tons of material, like all of your pipe, every piece, all of the trestles, all of the the ramps, the towers, the winches, everything goes on barges. You go there and you work out on the water and you don't come in. Uh, like I said with the logs, if you take a hundred truck a hundred logging trucks of logs and dump them in the water. It's always cheaper to tow them from um, Gibson's or somewhere up Vancouver Island. Put them in the water and tow them. Nothing's cheaper. Hmm. But they all show up at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. They all show up at once. You don't have any flexibility. You get a hundred truckloads today and you got to deal with them. Mm -hmm. With the trucks coming one at a time, you can have one on Tuesday, five on Friday, whatever you want. Mm. Uh, we have to tow stuff. It's cheaper if you can keep it with your derrick, and everything is there. Mm -hmm. But um, it's only one diesel engine. It's a tugboat mm -hmm. moving your stuff. Yeah. Okay. It's not a hundred trucks roaring around burning fuel. Okay. But there's there's advantages to trucks, and there's advantages to barges. You can't always take a barge in where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And you can't always get a truck where you need it to be. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we do upland work uh, as far as Northwest Territories, uh, Alberta, uh, Fort McMurray. Uh, we will we'll go and do that work, but uh, it takes a lot of resources, human resources too, and leaves us pretty uh, depleted down here to do our core work and to keep our customers that have been coming to us for 25, 30, 40 years happy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, the one way we did address that was Bernie didn't leave town. Bernie didn't go out of town. Bernie kept uh, in contact with his huge roster mm -hmm. of uh, core clients and uh, was able to talk to them and address their concerns and talk about scheduling their work uh, with each and every one of them. So, mm -hmm. I've worked with Bernie. He's got some other people working with him, but he's he has stayed in uh, that particular group core uh, business for as long as I've been here. And I think he's he's been with the company thirty plus years, mm. right out of school. So he's. He's in his late fifties, and when he graduated from BCIT, he came here and been here ever since. So, amazing. Yeah, yeah. fascinating. Oh yeah, lots of bridgemen on the on the labor side. Like we have the union workers, and then yeah. we have uh, staff and supervision, and occasionally uh, we have foremen who are union uh, come over to the staff side, and they become superintendents. Okay. okay. But they maintain their union yeah. affiliations. They pay their union dues. And they remain they remain part of the 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 union, and they 
are still brothers to all the other workers, mm -hmm. and they're there on job sites. It's just that uh, it gives them more flexibility. They don't have to work um, by the hour. You know, they're on monthly salary, and they they have uh, say uh, a little more laid back role in uh, how the jobs are organized, and then they spend more time in here helping me uh, planning work and uh, uh, pricing work as well. Mm -hmm. Are you, do you, do you ever find that you have difficulty finding the right people to do the work? Uh, union side or on the management well, side? Well, either, either side. Well, the union side we don't really, uh, well, to give you an example, um, the, the union supplies workers for union contractors and there's probably eight in British Columbia mm -hmm. and, uh, Typically, when you need a worker, you phone the hall, and they dispatch the next one on the list. Mm -hmm. So they have a board, mm -hmm. and Bob's name is at the top of the list. He's the next one going out the door. But we sh kind of sh uh, short circuit that, and we've got workers that have worked for Fraser River their entire career and don't want to work for anyone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they stay busy most of the time. When they're not busy, they mutually agree to take some time off. They don't go back to the hall. They don't go and work for anyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, they're core union workers. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a long time to train some of those guys, those foremen, those operators, those crane operators. Mm -hmm. And each piece of equipment is very unique and they are like the skipper of a derrick. They're like the captain. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge honor for them to be promoted to that and it's a huge status symbol to mm -hmm. be the operator of a certain derrick mm -hmm. and they're not interested in jumping about from company to company or losing that position so does it take long yeah it takes a lot of time and a huge effort for training uh, for us to bring them up years and years mm -hmm. uh, to to where they can get to be very productive and very efficient workers on certain pieces of equipment the foreman too uh, years and years, so we've got a roster of up-and-coming young foremen that get uh, placed in that position occasionally, and then we've got a roster of full-time foremen, and then we've got our our uh, older core foremen that have never worked for anyone else and uh, stay busy year-round as busy as they want to be, mm -hmm. and uh, and then a roster of superintendents that. Uh, some like working out of town, others don't want to be out of town, mm -hmm. and uh, they've taken years and years to, to train. Mm -hmm. What we find is we'll, we'll hire someone, it's such a, a unique sort of business. Um, it's, you know, if you're going to go work on concrete towers, there's a lot of work out there and there's a lot of different companies and a lot of ways to get experience, but there's only one or two or three marine construction contractors. Mm -hmm. It is definitely a very unique way of building things mm -hmm. and when we hire someone they'll be one year in training, another year as a um, assistant on a large project and then maybe a third year around here as a project coordinator assisting uh, project managers and then maybe after three years they can become actually a productive project manager where they're contributing to the bottom line mm -hmm. so that's it's a long time mm -hmm. it's a lot of uh, commitment from the company and we're very patient in uh, tr training and teaching those people because uh, a lot of time they'll spend the rest of their career contributing back to the company mm -hmm. but it can take three four or five years of training are, are all the uh, are all the marine construction firms then using the union hiring hall? No, there's some non-union. There are some non-union yep, ones. Yeah. They're out there. Yeah, yep. yeah. And and um, not so much in marine <coughs> upland and just pile driving. Lots of lots of non-union contractors, yeah. but marine contractors, Fraser River Pile and Dredge, Van Pile, Ruskin. That's about it. Yeah. And you're all you're all uh, you're all union. Uh, they all we all utilize the same two unions. Yeah. The crane operators are a different union, but mm -hmm. 
you know, you have crane operators all over town, but then you have a different group of crane operators that work on the water. They're hmm. different, unique. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they they can run a crane anywhere. Anywhere upland, you can run a crane, but to put that crane on something that floats, that moves mm -hmm. around, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. they can go work anywhere, but the other guys can't come and work here at any time. They need special training for that. So, 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 um, and may, maybe this is maybe this is a question for the ne for the next interview. But how do you um, how do you keep the business stable enough that these that that two thirty? Yeah, oh, we got chatting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a major commitment to to be able to uh, to keep people on uh, pretty much permanently. It's a struggle uh, when we get slow mm. and we don't have work. We start losing guys mm -hmm. that we don't want to lose because we know we have jobs coming up in a month or two mm -hmm. where we need those guys. And when those jobs do start up, they're gone and working for other contractors. Mm -hmm. We have our core guys that. We'll do whatever it takes. They don't want to work for anyone else, but we lose very skilled workers. Construction is pretty fickle. You know, you can be feast or famine. Mm -hmm. Right is now, that, is we're, that why you go into the land side? Uh, yeah, it's always a good uh, business plan to diversify. Yeah. So when marine construction dries up, um, we've got three, four, five projects upland. It's just a way of diversifying and spreading our revenue out in, mm -hmm. in different markets. Mm -hmm. But the land market is, it's like a bunch of barnyard dogs scrapping over bones. Whereas marine construction, it's bigger, it's more, mm -hmm. it's cost more, it's more risky. Um, it's a lot more glamorous, mm -hmm. some would say. And the, the risks are higher, but the rewards are much higher. Uh, the land work is a bunch of bare knuckles scrapping it out over a few bucks here and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's which is what I'm doing right now. So. <laughs> well, good luck. Thank you for for your very being very generous with your time.